Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the South Park Center and I'm here with Adam with his movie and The Brave Show Rise. Let's take a look at the clip. I feel angry. Angry that we did not solve this problem a long time ago. Maybe everyone around me thought that someday I would run for office because I have been outspoken about things that matter. District 103 is 20-30 minutes away from Hartwell. It's been Republican held for the last 8 or 12 years I think it is. It's time that we get somebody else to go against him and win. Um, Adam, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you and for having me. I normally say congratulations on your film. I just want to say congratulations but also thank you for making your documentary because, wow, incredible. Um, for those that haven't seen your uh, documentary, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. Um, basically, I followed some social activists after the Parkland tragedy from Miami to Tallahassee to speak to their con uh, elected officials. Um, and after they felt stymied by not being listened to with their concerns regarding the gun reform issue, um, about a month later, one of the stay-at-home moms who was on the bus that I met runs for office and decides that she's going to take it into, upon herself to try to help inspire change within the legislature. And so I follow her journey from zero to hero. It, it's so moving in so many ways because we all worldly know about this tragic event that took place. But then to see this incredible story, you know, and one of the most negative things that this country has seen, a horrible tragedy when these amazing kids all came together to kind of fight. But then this amazing story of this woman that just like enlightens you. And I think for anyone that's got a dream or thinks they can't do something, she just inspires you so much. And she's such a great and humble person. Now, you're obviously uh, from that part of the world uh, and you were there at the time. Um, what inspired you to actually make a documentary and how did it come about that you met Cindy as well? Um, well, there was this incredible mobilization of activism that happened immediately after Parkland in South Florida. And um, I was in awe of that because I'd heard stories of the 1960s with the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. the women's movement and whatnot. And to, to, to see that kind of mobilization so quickly, um, I thought, you know, I want to be part of this. I want to get on that bus. I wasn't yeah. really thinking right at that moment that I was going to make a film. I wanted to just partake in the activism. But then I thought, why not bring a camera? Yeah. You know, like, this is, my, this is what I do. <laughs> so I took, a, I took over my dad's spot on the bus, um, and then I just talked to the proper channels and said, look, is there any way I can interview some of these individuals on the bus? This is really inspiring. And uh, they said, as long as you get the approval and whatnot, and no one said no. So it was incredible. I, you know what's yeah. so amazing, Adam, is that it wasn't like you sat there and thought, right, that's it, I'm making a film, and this is the shot list, and this is this, and this no. is that. You know, I had two hours to decide whether or not I was going to do it. Wow. It's just like an accidental documentary, and it's... Um, nothing's an accident. No. Nothing's by accident. Yeah. Now it's a piece of art. Um, but... <laughs> It's, it's amazing because I felt like the way you shot it, I, I was right there on the, with you. I joined your train. It was so, so wonderful and so intimate. And you got really close to all these amazing people that are all fighting um, for this. What, and again, I think what's so wonderful about this March for Our Lives and everything else is that this magnified from Florida and all across the country, we all with Phoenix, even though over here in LA, we're very aware of this event. But what was it like? to actually be there in that time? Because there must have been a lot of emotions running high as well. You know, I think the most difficult part was to not get involved emotionally, mm -hmm. to really, because um, it started off with just myself. I didn't really have a crew. I mean, I had two hours, like I said, to prepare to, to get on this bus on a Sunday night at like 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't, I, I couldn't really plan it. So it was really just instinctual. I decided, you know, I'm gonna minimize the amount of questions. And I kept it to one, which was, why are you here? So everyone had a different reason why they were there. Cindy Polo, the, the woman who's the protagonist of the story, she was there because she didn't want to someday have to tell her son, you know what, I didn't do anything when this happened in our neighborhood. And um, there was a young woman uh, who I call girl power, who's a DACA dreamer. 
17 years old, um, and she decided, you know what, I want to do something about this because these kids were my age. Yeah. Um, and I'm of the age that I can, you mm -hmm. know, at 17. So um, I was very much inspired by these individuals, and it really, would, again, the most difficult part was just not to get emotionally involved. Yeah. To, to be able to take a step back and just document it as a journalist, let's say, would, yeah. uh, without getting involved. Um, and I found myself, by, not, by doing that in a way, it endeared me to, and it really helped them to open up more. Yeah. Because they didn't feel threatened by whatever opinion I might have. Yeah. And they, they learned to trust that I wasn't going to interfere with what they were doing. Yeah. So that was um, a learning lesson in itself was, was just trust your instincts. Once you've made a few films, yeah. you, you learn to hone your instincts and it really came down to that. Because this is my first professional documentary. I yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. But, I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, you can tell me that all day. I won't believe you. Um, let's talk about your subject, your protagonist, Cindy. <laughs> wow. I, she is like the definition of anyone that's got a dream out there or turned a negative into an enlightened positive for everyone else. Yeah. I, I, I was so inspired by her. Like, I, I think the way she makes you feel is that not only what she's doing is an amazing thing, but anyone that has ever wants to do something and maybe putting it aside for whatever reason, mm -hmm. she's doing it. And I think that was so powerful it came across. Now, how did they come across Cindy? What was it like working with her? And, and, and did you feel like something special was happening once she was kind of involved in the project? I always felt something was special with Cindy um, from the get-go. She was the first person to interview, to volunteer, because wow. I asked everyone to volunteer. You don't want to do this, I will make sure you're not in my film. Mm -hmm. you know, but anyone else, please tell me your stories as much as possible. You know when you do interviews, you want people to talk as much as possible yeah, so you have yeah, the yeah. most amount of material, and so I wanted in a way to, to allow them to speak in their own voice. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you, when you tailor the questions a certain way, you're almost forcing people to say things yep. a certain way. And I wanted them to be themselves. Now Cindy is um, probably the most articulate person I met that day. Mm -hmm. um, if, if there wasn't such a thing as batteries packs running out when you have two hours to prepare for a shoot, I probably would have followed her all day. Mm -hmm. But given that I didn't know this was going to be her story, mm -hmm. I decided to interview just about anyone who was willing to be interviewed. Yeah. Um, and then towards the end of the first day, because uh, I wasn't even sure what the movie was going to be about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew at the end of the first day I had all this amazing footage of, of this activism, but I had, did, not yet have a, did not yet have a story um, of a to follow certain, you know, specific characters until I followed up with Cindy a month later. And then she, when she tells me, you know, I'm running for office and I basically thought to myself, I'm going to stalk this woman for about the next six months because this is what a, what an incredible story to have so much, have her be so articulate yeah. in her um, passion behind her activism mm -hmm. as a stay at home mom. And then, uh, I mean, just as a human being in general, but yeah. like the fact that she really took it upon herself because of her son, yeah, um, and it always comes full circle back to her son. Mm -hmm. There's a really endearing, my favorite moment in, in, while, while I was making the film, and I think I kind of knew, is this, the scene, and without spoiling too much about the film, the scenes with, with, where, where she's anticipating the election results. Yeah. Um, I have a moment where she, I follow her, and I'm literally chasing her at that point because she's so anxious to find out the results. Well, she goes to her par little party that she had in a bar, and you would think after 30 minutes of her anticipating these results, mm -hmm. that she would go and be glued to the television. Yeah. The first thing she does is she goes to her son. Yeah. Oh, completely was... forgets about what's, going, what's happening in the election results and just goes right to the source of her inspiration. Yeah. And um, that to me was like, I hope this woman gets elected senator someday. Yeah. Or, or you know, the sky's the limit, I think. Yeah, you know? and, and I think um, with, uh, with, with her son, I mean, she wants, that was her, 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 her battery of inspiration to say, no, I did something mm -hmm. to try and prevent this and literally took on a whole community and a job and a fight and everything yeah. for her to to say, I don't want you living through what we're living through right now. Um, that must have been, when you heard that, you must have thought, my goodness me, that is... That is some, some uh, amazing thing you want to do. But of course, she was up against a, a challenge because mm -hmm. her opponent was very, <laughs> very wealthy. Just uh, explain to the audience a little bit about the yeah. kind of how that started, because this is amazing. She, she decided to run, like I said, after we filmed that first day. I yeah. think she felt inspired because wow. she, she, 
she, you know, a lot of these um, activists ended up speaking in the chamber of, mm -hmm. the, of the house, mm -hmm. of the state, state house um, of representatives. And I, I actually lost touch with her that day. My battery's running out, phone wasn't working you know, inside the building. And then I hear this voice coming from the closed circuit television that, because it was standing room only outside of the chamber. And who, sh sure enough, it's Cindy Polo basically telling, telling the Congress, like, we got to do something. Wow. You know? And, and um, I remember telling her at the end of the day, I know that you're part of a group mm -hmm. of individuals in Miami-Dade County that are looking for the next candidate. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, like, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. Why don't you run? Mm. And you know, her response was, I've thought about it, but I don't know. And I said, because you killed it in that speech. And you know, you, you, your voice represents what a lot of people are feeling and maybe can't yeah. articulate it the way, you, the way you do, the way yeah. that you just, like you wanna have, you wanna have, Cindy's the kind of person that you, you meet her, regardless of your p political affiliation, yeah. you just instantly like her. Yeah. There's a certain energy about her that, that is very likable. And that's what it should be about. You know, I, I completely agree. It yeah. shouldn't be about these party divisions and, no. and, and what's happening. It should be about the individual. Yeah. You know, vote, vote. Your, your leaders should represent um, your, your aesthetic, your, mm -hmm. your mentality, your demeanor, not just that you believe, yay, 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 mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but it should, they should represent the humanity between, behind your, um, behind your, your, your district, your precinct. Now, I mean, Florida is, is such a beautiful state, beautiful, amazing people I know yeah. from Florida. Just been through some insanely hard times with, with the shootings and obviously Orlando and this one. Well, it's a nationwide problem. It's a nationwide problem. Um, you know, making this film, uh, you, you know, I mean, and the people that you met and they were involved and, and particularly being in Parkland who've, you know, I'm sure as a community have, have really suffered so much and also got a light on this beautiful people that do live in that community for something so sad and negative and, and, and horrible. Um, well, the students took it upon themselves. They did an amazing thing. And that's why the mobilization happened so quickly because yeah. they realized unless we do something, and it's the same thing with Cindy. Yeah. It parallels her story. Unless I do something about this, it's not gonna get done. Yeah. Because the, most of the elected officials, this I can testify to, are basically owned by the lobbyists. Yeah. And the organizations that are paying these lobbyists. And so, um, you know, there's a thing, and this, this is not in the documentary, but to get a meeting with an elected official in, in the state of Florida, it takes two weeks. This, I started, filming this 10, uh, 10 days after the Parkland incident. So wow, that's, that's, that's within the two week period. So none of, none of the individuals on the bus could get a meeting. Yet all these lobbyists somehow had meetings. Did they know that this Parkland incident was gonna happen? No, of course yeah. they didn't because they would have prevented it. Yeah. Somehow they got these meetings within the two week period. Mm -hmm. So clearly right there, there's a dysfunction within, within, our, within our, our system mm -hmm. that needs to change. Yeah. And, and, we need to get those people out of there yeah. because they do not reflect the, the voices of their communities. Absolutely. They may not even live in their communities. Right. You know, and, yeah. and that's a huge problem in this yeah. country, not just in the state level or the local level, but yeah. like in a national level. It is. It's very, yeah. and what, I mean, I got so many things from watching your documentary. It was, you know, everything from against all odds to coming together mm -hmm. to someone following their dreams to being inspired by other people's dreams. Uh, what we're like when we're working together and rather than against each other and being divisive. Yeah. What did you want to get from this documentary? What did you want your audience to take from your documentary? Because what you gave us was something extremely powerful that I think every American and any human with a heart should watch. I think that um, what I, when I started doing it and what it became cha has cha and changed, obviously. But when I started, I wanted to just capture a moment in time. Mm this mobilization that I had not been a witness to in my lifetime, maybe in, but in newsreels and whatnot, you know, I would see these things. Um, so that started off, let me capture a moment. And what happened was, not only that I, was, did I have that ability to document this moment, but I was able to highlight certain individuals who I think need recognition because of the fact that they are representing, they're one of many mm -hmm. that are out there that I think maybe need to see this so that they can feel that kind of inspiration to bring them to the level where they go from being 
just someone who believes in something to becoming an activist, mm -hmm. or maybe from going be, being an activist to be to running for office, mm -hmm. and maybe from running for office, and if you happen to get elected, actually inspire the change that is going to help us get to a place where we're going to be safer. Mm -hmm. You know, because look, look, what the NRA did after the Parkland incident is how can we monetize this? How can we sell more guns because of this tragedy? And what they did was they told their elected officials, arm the teachers. And That's not going to solve the issue. No. That's just going to create more fear within, within the school system. Right. And I don't know, there might be some teachers that don't need to have a gun. Yeah, 100%. To, you know, their role is to teach and educate, not, yes. to, not to instill fear. Exactly. And so that's when I realized, you know what, that's not a solution. That's just a way to sell more guns. Yeah. And that's a shame because, and, and so like, to go back to your question, what did it become? I really hope that it inspires people to sort of look within themselves and their inner voice, not just within the political cycle, mm -hmm. but with just about anything. Yeah. Like, this is just a traditional hero's journey of, I gotta fight the system on my own, but am I really on my own? No, I'm not, mm -hmm. I've got my people, I've got my mm -hmm. supporters. But at the end of the day, it's really up to that individual to make those decisions, to yeah. go forward, mm -hmm. because you're gonna have the village behind you. Oh, 100%. So, um, What's so amazing, Adam, is that this was part of um, New Filmmakers, a uh, very special in focus for Hispanic Heritage Month, but on top of that, it was in partnership with uh, the Academy and yes. the Oscars. <laughs> what was that experience like for you having your film at the home of the Oscars? What that was, was incredible. Um, the fact that the museum hasn't opened to the public yet, yeah. that's pretty special because like how many, you know, th that's, I would have paid a lot of money if I had had the money to right. be able to, 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 to have that kind of a screening. Uh -huh. It was it was just wonderful. Um, everyone was so giving forthright. You guys are like rock stars for <laughs> for, uh, for for all your um, support. Um, and I don't know what to say. Um, like took some photos, memories. Um, yeah. You know, I've seen them filmed a million times. Well, I, I, it, it was an extra special one, you know. I, I think what's amazing is that essentially um, you, your audience, you know, got to see it. Because uh, the, the thing about you, I mean, I know every film needs an audience, but your film really needs to be Thank seen you. by its audience, you know. And I'm so moved by it. And I think the title of the documentary speaks for itself and says everything. Um, and I, I love that. I love that title. Um, what is next for you? I'm in post-production on uh, another documentary. It's a feature mm -hmm. that I actually started before. Mm -hmm. um, it's a personal journey of my own um, because I wanted to document the last month of the life of my cat, who was 23, oh. 24 at the time. Oh, which I is watch like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, first time I turned the camera on me, and, uh -huh. well, it's not the second, but like yeah. the, the, the uh, I, I, it goes back to the whole, how do you turn an extreme tragedy into a positive experience? Mm. And so I, after being away from home for a long time, I went to visit my folks and I noticed that my therapy cat from when I was in high school was not in good shape. Even though the last time I had been there, he was like a two year old. Yeah. And um, so it, my friend who's not a filmmaker, she uh, said, you know what? I should film this. Yeah. And I said, okay, I'll, Teach you how to make, how to shoot, and you document this, this, and then turn. To, and then, as this was happening, all these sort of old, um, these old memories that I kind of blocked out from my childhood mm -hmm. started coming, coming out yeah. because I'm sort of taking care of this animal who, yeah. who's on his last, you know, last few, last sort of few weeks of his life. Wow! And all the people who knew him in the neighborhood. And so you get a slice of the neighborhood, which is called Westchester, Miami. Eyes, yeah. Sort of, because yeah. they all knew him. You, yeah. you meet a political consultant. You meet a woman who turned into a swinger wow. to the swinging culture. You meet um, a, a teacher, uh, a former, um, just all the different characters of this neighborhood mm. who happen to know the cat. And it all comes together with how I decided to throw him a 100-year-old birthday party. Oh my goodness, this guy. <laughs> I love it. No, that's, that's fantastic. I, but anyway, I, that's not, the I, film is all over the place I'm, right I'm now, ready right? to see it. I'm ready to see it. <laughs> I, I feel like there's a lot of teaching you've also given us, not only for 
the audience to watch your documentary, but also for any filmmakers out there as well. But what one piece of advice do you have that you maybe could share the audience that filmmakers out there maybe want to follow in your footsteps? You know, get to know your inner voice as soon as possible. Try, fail, keep trying, do it. This film would not have been made if I didn't just get out of my butt and do it. Yeah. I was in post-production, uh, what's the word? I was like in a purgatory because I was make, making this feature that's about my family and mm -hmm. my neighborhood and I got stuck. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the equivalent of writer's block. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go do this. And so really now we live in a world where with digital and you can get a camera for a couple of hundred bucks. That, yeah. that, that, that the one I used, I think was like $500. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> you know, screening in a movie theater now. Wow. So um, learn the craft, keep yeah. trying, keep failing, and then you're gonna succeed because, and uh, the more that you fail, the more you're really honing that craft because then your success is gonna be that much sweeter. And that so much, true. Um, and so just find your voice, um, watch movies, learn from watching movies. Yeah. Um, TV is great writing now. You yeah, know? oh it's amazing. Um, yeah, there's, just, there's, well I think you hit it on the nail on the head which is you know your inner voice and you know what I love about your work is thank you for your voice which is actually you emulated other people's voices, which can therefore, for its audience, make sure your voice is heard as well. So I love it. Adam, please keep making movies for our sake. You know, please, we need your movies. Thank and, you, uh, appreciate it. We need it. your voice and thank you so much um, for this film. Such an important film. I advise everybody to watch it. So thank you very much. Adam, everybody. Namaste. Namaste.